with you. And also with you. We are gathered by God to share, share the love of Jesus. Jesus. Welcome to worship on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. We are in the long green season of the church. And in this long green season, we're focused on growth. Have you seen how the farm stands are just chock full of vegetables this time of year? This is a wonderful thing, a great example of what God is looking for in our life. A life that is chock full of the fruits of faith that are showing forth in our lives. And today we're going to be focusing on one of those fruits called love. It's the best fruit. And so today, in this coming hour, we're going to hear God's word. We're going to pray. We're going to sing. We're going to bless one another. We're going to share Holy Communion. It is going to be a great day here at St. Paul's. Thank you so much for coming in person and for joining us out in the live stream wherever you are. We're thrilled that you are here and we believe that God intended for us to be here together and laid the groundwork so that we could be together to sing his praise in the congregation today. One thing that I would ask that all of you do, whether you're here in person or out there on the live stream, is to let us know that you are here. As I mentioned before the service to the folks here gathered, the one thing that the pandemic did a really great job of is scattering that which should be gathered. And so we need to know who God is gathering into our midst. And the best way for you to do that is to scan the QR code if you happen to be here. Just take out your cell phone, go ahead and scan that with your camera, and then open up the, uh, open up the uh, Safari app or whatever you use to, uh, to navigate the web and fill out that information. If you're out there in the live stream, there'll be a link in the comments there on Facebook. All you have to do is click on that. It'll bring you to the same page. We need to know that you're here so that we can do whatever we possibly can to keep on gathering the people that God has once upon a time and currently bringing into our midst. We want to remain as together as we can as the body of Christ. So please, your help in that will really go a long way. We're coming still through the book of Ephesians this summer. We started off right at the beginning with the grace, mercy, and peace that Paul wrote to his people in Ephesus. And now we're continuing in Ephesians. We're getting closer to the end, but there's still time and reason to read or to listen over and over to help you grow in your understanding and your devotion to the Lord and your appreciation of that message. So we're now in chapter 5. We've only got chapter 6 to go, so we're drawing quickly to an end. But this is a great time to jump in and say, let this word dwell within me richly. And today, the word that we're going to be focusing on is this one. Marriage. And you know the song, love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. If we don't have love, marriage will never be successful. But marriage is a picture of a greater love than the one between husband and wife. Marriage is a picture of the fellowship, the connection between God and his people. Christ is the groom and the church is his bride. And we are going to explore that today and take a look at what Christ has promised to us so that we might be able better to promise those things to one another. So with all of that said, what I want to remind you of is that as long as we are able to with the Delta variant and all of those things that are coming, I want to remind you that not only are we going to be worshiping on Sundays at 10 o'clock in the morning, beginning on September 11th, a Saturday, we're going to be resuming our in-person worship on Saturday evenings. And so that service will be happening at 4 o'clock, Saturday evening, I guess it's afternoon, at 4 o'clock rather than at 5 o'clock. And so we're going to be looking forward to seeing people at that service as well. So another option returning to us for worship in that way. With all that said, let's stand now and pray together our gathering prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, as we come into your house to praise you, bless us with a growing faith in our Savior, a cheerful hope in your mercy, and a sincere love for you and for one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. God bless your worship this morning.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and, and the, the place where your glory dwells. Vindicate me, O oh Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and, and I have, have trusted in the Lord, Lord without, without wavering. wavering. Prove me, O oh Lord, and try me. Test, Test my, my heart and, and my mind. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O oh Lord. Proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's therefore come before his throne of grace with humble and sincere hearts to lay our burdens down. Lord Jesus, as we listen to your word just now, we recognize ourselves, but we have not always walked in integrity. We know we have been hypocrites. Sometimes we have repaid evil for evil. We have not always sought to live in harmony. We find ourselves dwelling on the things of man and neglecting the things of God. By these and our many other sins. We have been a hindrance to you. Have, have mercy, mercy, O Lord. Lord. We, we repent of all our sins. We put, put our trust in you without wavering. Overcome our evil with, with your good. good. Forgive, Forgive us today and forever and for, for the sake, sake of, of Jesus Christ, Christ our King. Sisters and brothers, be glad. Rejoice. God has heard your cry for mercy, and without wavering, Jesus Christ denied himself and took up his cross to save us. And daily, he fulfills his promise to save and deliver us. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please take a moment and share that peace one with another with the folks nearby you. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Peace,
The Old Testament reading today is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 25. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock, and to the birds of the heavens, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman, and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ in the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark in the seventh chapter. Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. As of last weekend, when I performed a wedding down in Congress Park for Eric and Natalie, folks that I have become acquainted with in the community, I have preached on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 70 times. <laughs> 70 times. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not rejoice at wrong. All of those wonderful passages, many of you probably had them at your weddings. I've only preached on what Jen Johnson just read to us from Ephesians chapter 5 once. Can you guess why? You laugh because you know. It's that line that says, wives, submit to your husbands. When Jen sat back down, Chris whispered something in her ear. I know. <laughs> I know that he said something about that. And here's why I've only preached on that once. And love 70 times. And the answer is because we misunderstand what love and submit are about. Like many things in the church, there's a human understanding and a divine understanding. Human relationships among people, divine relationship between God and people. Notice the sign of the cross, right? We look at love and we decorate it with flowers and scrolls and swirlies and hearts, stars, because of how it makes us feel. There's a reason that we look at early teenagers and they're just discovering puberty and the other gender and just kind of smile because we felt it once. And we think of all of the songs that talk about love. I sang one to you before, it's the title of the sermon, Love and Marriage, Love and Marriage, but love is a many splendored thing. And Love makes the world go round. All you need is love, and onward we go. How many songs do you know about Submit? <laughs> if you did, it was probably like in death metal or something along those lines. It's just not what we listen to. That's because we're looking at Submit in a human range, with human eyes. I don't usually trot out my Greek New Testament to help you understand scripture, but this is a very important one. It's a word that I'd love for you to know. It's hippo tasso. It's one word all together. Say it, hippo, like you know, hippo. Tasso. Put it together, you get hippotasso. Hippotasso. Hippotasso is a word that comes out of the military. So a private would be hippotassoed to a corporal who would be hippotassoed to a sergeant, who would be hippotassoed to the officers that go above him all the way up to the joint chiefs of staff and the commander-in-chief. There's an order. Hippotasso talks about an ordered relationship. Have you ever thought about this? Why when something goes really wrong with a corporal or a private, a lieutenant bears responsibility? Have you ever thought about why when something goes really wrong with the responsibility, a colonel or a general is, has issues? Because it's not about submitting, denigrating. 
It's about a top, a bottoms up responsibility for. So if you start thinking of hippotasso, which is the word to submit, rather than from top down where somebody's got their thumb on you and making you do things, but rather think about it in for whom am I responsible? it starts to take on a more godly character. Husbands are responsible for their wives. Christ is responsible for husbands. And within the Trinity, Christ of the Father is responsible for Christ. There's an order. God the Father sent his son Jesus into the world in order to save people. There's an order to this. And Paul is saying that that order continues into our relationships one with another. It was Adam's fault that Eve ate the apple or the fruit in the garden. But who bore the responsibility? Who's the one that came into the world in order to give his skin to save both of them? Jesus. And who lost his son in the process? The Father. And what is that relationship based on? Love. Why in the world would it say for husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church if God had it in any other way. Those who, with human eyes, look at the word submit, look at it as if wives have the heavier lift. But men are called to sacrifice themselves, literally laying down their lives for their wives. This is why Paul talks First, in Galatians 5.21, about submitting to one another as in reverence for Christ. Today, we're talking about that relationship between husbands and wives. But in the midweek refuel that'll come on Wednesday, we'll talk about parents and children. It's another one where they submit to one another. There's a responsibility and a role and an order that God has given and then another one, a little bit later on, about those who are masters and slaves. In these days, we'd call them bosses and employees. We submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We order ourselves out of reverence for Christ. And the order looks like this. Wives, respect your husbands. Because they are called to and in the best of possible worlds, would be willing to lay down their lives, not just figuratively, but literally, for you. This is why we look at the good order that God has made, the responsibility that God has made, and we say, now that's love. Christ has come into the world, and, and for those of us who are gentlemen in the church, it's strange to call ourselves the bride. But Christ is our bridegroom. He not only promised to love and cherish and all of those other things that we put in marriage vows to us, he laid it on the line and did it. Despite the fact that we bristle at his lordship. Despite the fact that when we call him king, sometimes we mutter it out the side of our mouth and don't submit to him. But when we think about what our Lord has called us to, and while it may seem like an ideal and maybe not achievable. Our Lord says that as we regard him and his love and embrace him and his love, we can do that for one another as well. We can take his love 
to our marriage. And for the wives, Paul says that looks like honoring the husband. And for the husbands, that looks like loving like Christ does to the point of sacrifice. When we take it upon ourselves to call on God and his love, to love like that, it doesn't matter if it's in the context of a marriage. It doesn't matter if it's in the context of our friends or neighborhood or within our congregation or at our places of work. When we look at ourselves as those whom God has sent to bring about his loving, devoted, committed order to the world, and we see what he's done for us. Husbands, as part of the bride of church, we submit to the rule and the reign and the gentle direction of Jesus Christ so that we might continue to enjoy and give thanks for the gift of his love. And wives, when we recognize that we too are part of God's work of giving ourselves for the life of the world, of doing whatever is necessary to demonstrate that God's love, then, yeah, it's part of our responsibility to lay down our lives. It's part of your responsibility to lay down your lives as well. When we look at marriage from the human plane, you know what it really is? It's contract law. Who gets to inherit what? Who has which rights? Who gets to marry whom? God has so much more in mind for us. God has a beautiful future prepared for us. And right at this moment, we are like the engaged fiancé, getting ready to come to the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, where Christ has set table and brought in all of our friends and family, and he has given us the opportunity to sing and dance and praise and celebrate because the groom and his bride are together forever. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage, or better yet, they're like God and his people. Thanks be to God. When he looked at us, he said, I do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. And may the peace of God that passes all of our human understanding keep your hearts rejoicing in the love of Jesus Christ, submitting to his gentle and glorious rule, and blessing one another with his love. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, Love in Christ is Strong and Living. Just a little aside, this is a beautiful, this, this hymn arises out of a beautiful marriage. The words of this hymn were written by Dorothy Schultz, who lives down in Bethlehem, uh, down in Del Mar, and the, and the music is composed by her husband, Ralph Schultz. And I think this is one of those beautiful things. And it was written for their daughter and son-in-law on the occasion of their marriage. This is one of the ways that it should go. And it's great to know that we have those people in our church and in our world and here in our neighborhood.
baptized into Christ Jesus and living together in trust and hope, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. St. Paul's is a praying congregation. I'm really proud to say that of all of you. This is a great opportunity for us to remind ourselves of the fact that Christ is devoted to us and is glad to hear when his bride calls to him for the help that we need and in thanksgiving for all that he provides. If you have things for which you're thankful, we want to hear about them. If you have things about which you're worried, we want to hear about them. And the best way to let us know about them is to email them to the church. Prayer at spalutheran.org gathers those prayers into a single point where we can use them in a couple of different ways. One way is in our Monday Connect. This is a time where we set aside every Monday morning at 1030 in order to bring up those prayers of the congregation and lay them before the Lord once again and also give opportunity for us to reach out to others in love in that way. If you have the opportunity and the, and the time to join us at 1030 on Monday, it's an online group. You can find out about it at our website, spalutheran.org. Another thing that we do with those prayers is we send them out on our weekly connect. This is St. Paul's newsletter that goes out Thursday or Friday of each week. And in there, it becomes a devotional tool so that we might be able to remain committed to God and to one another in that way. So if you'll send that prayer request to prayer at spalutheran.org, or if you happen to be out on our Facebook page, you'd be able to put it in the comment section. We'll be very glad to remember those in prayer. There have been some prayer requests that have come in yet this morning. First, we want to pray for Jeff Freeman, who is a nephew of Walt and Helen Stutzel. Jeff is already uh, a quadriplegic, but he has recently been diagnosed with covid that is a very scary circumstance because respiratory issues for those who do not have use of their limbs is a very difficult thing. So we want to ask the Lord's mercy for him. We want to remember Diane Richmond. Diane suffers long term with respiratory illness and difficulties. And right at the, this moment, as it's even sticky in here at this moment, uh, it is just difficult for her to breathe. And so breathing being important for her life, we want the Lord to give her uh, relief in that way. We want to pray for those who are in the path of tropical storm, hurricane. Now, I don't know if it's Henri or Henry. Uh, the French among us would say Henri. Uh, but those who are in that, I've been in hurricanes. They're, they're nothing to sneeze at, so we ask that the Lord would bless there. Continued prayers for those who have Alzheimer's and other memory issues, including Susan Smith, who is the best friend of our sister Joanne Hughes. Also, a healthy pregnancy for Bonnie Sargent. And this is from Terry Knowlton. So... Bearing those things in mind, there will also be an opportunity for you to mention those concerns that you have out loud or in the silence of your heart during the course of the prayers today. So, let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, saying, For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and may I always walk in your faithfulness. As your Son sanctifies this church, may we love and submit to each other, in the same way that your church bows in worship to your son. Through this submission and love for one another, may the world see that we are your disciples. Embolden all believers throughout creation to proclaim thanksgiving aloud, telling the world of your wondrous deeds. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. And may I always walk in your faithfulness. Heavenly Father, at the dawn of creation, you knew that Adam should not be alone. Formed from his very bones, you breathed life into Eve. May all husbands cherish their wives as Christ loves his church. And wives honor their husbands as the church praises your son. May nothing sever the bonds of marriage between man and woman. 
for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and may I always walk in your faithfulness. Bless our church leaders, pastors, and bishops in Christ. May they always walk with integrity and bless you in reverence and thanksgiving. May your servants continue to preach your redemption from sin and death, gained and given by the blood of Christ and celebrated in the sacraments. By your grace, continue to bless their families, make their burdens light and their yokes easy. In mercy, may the human care ministries of this church exemplify your steadfast love to the world. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. And may I always walk in your faithfulness. As we sojourn in creation, keep our eyes and hearts focused on where your glory dwells in the body of Christ Jesus. As we await his triumphant return, the devil, this world, and our flesh will strike us with pain, suffering, and grief. Comfort and heal all who suffer, especially those that we commend to you now. Jeff, Diane, everybody in the path of Tropical Storm Yangri, those who are recovering after the hurricane and earthquake in Haiti, the people in Afghanistan, everyone suffering with Alzheimer's, for Bonnie and her pregnancy. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and may I always walk in your faithfulness. Great King, your son prophesied that in the latter days there would be earthquakes, famines, and pestilences, terrors and great signs from heaven, wars and rumors of wars, such as we are seeing even in these days. As we wait for the great and glorious day of our Lord's return, may your Holy Spirit inspire our leaders to govern justly, and all the people dwell in tranquility, so that all may worship you in peace. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. And may I always walk in your faithfulness. Into your hands, O Lord, we do commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As, we gather, as, as we gather together for worship, we always want to thank God with tangible ways. Sometimes that's an offering that doesn't fit in the plate, the ways that we serve and bless one another. But other times, it is with an offering that does fit in the plate. And today, as we gather our tithes and offerings, that offering plate is stationed there at the door. If you haven't already used it this morning, we encourage you to use it and to return to the Lord your God thanksgiving through the monetary means that He has provided for you. If you would prefer, we also have an electronic giving option. Our platform is available at spalutheran.org slash give. However we give our offerings, whether it's here in person or electronically, we ought to offer them devotedly and prayerfully. So let us rise and pray together. O Lord of hosts, we are so happy to offer back to you what you have first given us. We know you use these gifts to support the work of this congregation, but we pray that you will bless our giving to extend beyond us. Use these tithes and offerings to reach out and bless many others so that all the praise and glory may be yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we come to a foretaste of the wedding feast that God has prepared for us in heaven. We come with great praise and joy in our hearts knowing that our Lord comes to be with us here in this meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god by the cleansing word of the cross we have been made spotless as we come to this foretaste of the great wedding feast of the lamb in his kingdom bless us to welcome him here with joy and with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven to laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and singing Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heart and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Now as our Savior has taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We join in singing the Agnus Day. seated. Instead of you coming to the altar to receive Holy Communion, the altar is going to come to you. As I bring to you these prepackaged elements of Christ's body and blood, I'd invite you to let me know that you intend to commune by either nodding at me or something along those lines, or if you don't intend to commune, by placing your hands across your chest in this way. And I'll be glad to speak a blessing over you if that's the case. It would be good if you would kindly wait until uh, everyone has been able to receive their elements and I've returned to the altar in order that we might be able to commune together, receiving the body of Christ as one and the blood of Christ as one this way. After Holy Communion, the ushers will come forward with some vessels to collect the empty containers for reverent disposal. With that, we invite you to sing with us our distribution hymn, Gracious Savior, Grant Your Blessing.
please take your elements and open up the part that has the body of Christ. Hold it before you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Amen. Amen. Likewise with the cup. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Please rise. We sing. Let's pray together. O oh God, the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, in, in loving, loving kindness, kindness you sent your only begotten Son to wash us clean and make us yours. We thank you for the forgiveness and peace you have given in this sacrament. Send us out that we may share with others the wonders of your love. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13 tells us that love never ends. And that's the beautiful thing about love. When it finds its origin in God, it never comes to an end. Our closing hymn today is a song that reminds us of that love forever.
are gathered by God to share the love of Jesus. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all so much for coming. Remember to reconnect with one another. Say hello. Bless one another. Remind each other of the love that God has for you and for one another. We'll see you here next week. God's blessings and peace be with you all.